hierarchy and uh, they also respect for the elderly. Yeah. Nothing else? No, that's it. Okay, so, uh, women do you want? What countries did you choose? That's unusual. What di what's the difference between Angola and Argentina? Angola has high power distance than Argentina. Argentina avoidance. Uncertainty avoidance. Uncertainty avoidance of Angola is less than Argentina. Yeah. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
then let's, we are talking about the uh, <coughs> elements of culture. So we start with rituals. So an example of a ritual is marriage, or funeral, or baptism. Okay. So every culture has their own rituals. The pattern of behavior that's learned and repeated. In Korea, for example, if, when you're eating, it's kind of, you have a lot of rituals for eating. Okay? Maybe the foreigners need to learn when they come to Korea. So what kind of rituals do you have in Korea when you're eating? Korean students. I shouldn't be telling you, right? You should be telling me. What are the rituals in Korea for eating? Share your food. Anything else? Yes? The oldest person is the first one to start eating, right? Anything else? They have to greet before and after eating. Greet the people before and after eating. Uh, before and after. Yes. Okay. For example, in uh, Spain, they may have their dinners very late. You could even start your dinner at midnight. Okay. So every country has their own ritual. For, what about in China? What kind of rituals do you have for eating in China? Is it similar to Korea? What's different between China and Korea? Yes. Chinese people use chopsticks more. Yeah. <coughs> okay. We have some common. We have some in common with other cultures. Sometimes in China, you use the round table. Yeah, we use. You can turn the table, table around and move the dishes. Yeah. That kind of thing. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so then we have uh, symbols. Symbols like languages. We talked about the linguistic uh, difference. English also tends to have lower power distance. So English can be less formal uh, than the other languages. You might find also when you're writing an email, right? If you write an email at your work to your boss, you just say their first name, right? Like John or Mark, if you're writing an email to your boss. So maybe in Korea, if you're writing an email to your boss, you might say Sajang name or something like that. <laughs> mm -hmm. Is that correct? Okay, so English is, just tends to be less formal. Uh, then we have aesthetics. So aesthetics can be important in marketing, right? Like some countries have their own idea, like um, images, like the Japanese garden in Japan or the Russian ballet in Russia. Uh, Korea of kimchi, China family altar, right? These are things associated with your country. Uh, in Ireland, we have some traditional sports, that kind of thing. So for example in Ireland, some drink company, they try to make an advertisement linked with the traditional sports okay, on the TV, that kind of thing. So <coughs> every country, we, if we understand the aesthetics in the different countries, their music, their arts, their dance, their dress, okay, that's going to help us with marketing too. Right? Uh, if we're insensitive to aesthetic values, we can offend and create a negative impression. Okay, so if we do something against the ballet, or sometimes against the religion, in South Africa one time they had an advertisement where they had some angel throwing away their halo. The Afri South African people got quite annoyed about that. Okay? So we have to be careful about those things. You can also have the colors. In China, colors are important, I believe. What are lucky colors in China? Hmm? Yellow and red. Do companies use yellow and red a lot when they're marketing in China? Oh, no, no. Because if they use yellow, um, there is also color. Uh, mm -hmm. and it's, uh, it's a little bit rude. MST, you are trying to dominate something. Yellow uh, means you're trying to dominate? Mm -hmm. 
So they so that is better. Red is used more often. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What about in Korea? Do you have any lucky colors? No. No. I don't think. Also, in what about the uh, numbers? In China, do you have some lucky numbers? Mm -hmm. What was the date of the Olympics in China? Date. Yeah. What was the date of the Olympics in Beijing? Um, 2008 and the August 8th. And the 8th of the 8th, 2008. Yeah. Why? We have a lot of 8th. Hmm? 8th actually means fortune. 8th is the fortunate number. Mm. What about 4? Do you like the number 4? No. Why not? It means death. <laughs> is it the same in Korea? Yeah, just the same. Right. In Western countries, they don't like the number 13. Okay. You can see sometimes the building doesn't have the 13th floor. So, what do you see? Discuss with your partner. What do you see when you look at this picture? What can you see in this picture? So, discuss with your partner. What do you see? <laughs> in the background, right? You just also focus on the front. Hmm? Well, Asian people have different field of vision, usually. They see more things in the picture, right? Than in just in the front of the picture. So just people uh, have different ways of, of looking at things. Their bra brain pattern can be different. <coughs> So we talked we talked a little bit about numbers and other beliefs and superstitions. In the Western country, people don't walk under the ladder. In some countries, the black cat is lucky. Those kind of things. So, what superstition do you have in Korea? Do you understand superstition? Yes. What kind of superstitions do you have in Korea? Uh, crows brings bad luck. Huh? Uh, crows bring bad news. Crows. You know, the bird, Crows. black crow, ah, yeah. yes. black bird, bird. Yes. bring bad news. I see. Any other superstitions? So anyway, we should respect every country's belief and uh, that kind of thing, right? Uh, we already talked about Nike in China. They made a mistake where they had an advertisement where Michael Johnson, the basketball player, kills his own ghost, right? But uh, that was against the Chinese belief about you shouldn't show anybody killing their own themselves, even if it's a ghost. So they, Nike had a big problem. Then uh, 
we just looked at this picture, the thought process can be different. People learn different thought process when they're in school, way of looking at things and way of seeing things. Okay? So there's the focus. Eastern people can focus on the front of the image. Or sorry, Western people can focus on the front of the image. Eastern people tend to see all of more of the image. <clears throat> so we just discussed a little bit already about the country of origin effect. So discuss with your partner what country do you think is the best for these products? Wine, sports cars, and watches. What country do you think is the best one for making each one? Where do you want to buy the wine from? The sports car and the watch? Okay, so uh, can you not? Do you like ice skating? Figure skating? No. No? Do you like Kim Yuna? <laughs> Are you a fan of Kim Yuna? Yes? Good? No relation? No relation? Not the same family? No. So which, which countries do you choose? European people would say Italy for sports cars, but maybe <coughs> German sports cars are popular in in, uh, in Italy. We have Lamborghini and Ferrari. Right? Uh, so most people would give the same answer. Interestingly, Switzerland was the best for making watches in the old days, but nowadays a very cheap digital watch you can buy for five dollars is going to be more accurate timekeeper than the best handmade Swiss watch, right? The digital one is more accurate these days. So, uh, <clears throat> this company from Venezuela called Chocolates El Rey, they make some of the best cocoa beans, right? In Venezuela, in Ecuador, in Colombia, they have very good cocoa beans. These beans are bought by the great chocolate houses in Europe. So, El Rey chocolate is very, doesn't sell well outside of its home market, even though they use the the best quality cocoa beans. People don't buy it because it's from Venezuela. Okay? So consumers aren't willing to pay a higher price for Venezuelan chocolate. However, they will pay a higher price for Belgian chocolate or Swiss chocolate. Okay? So uh, this makes a challenging situation for this company that their country is not famous, doesn't have the reputation for chocolate. So they have to try and break this kind of thing. So <clears throat> when we learn about uh, a country's culture, there is different types of knowledge. We can learn factual knowledge by reading the book. Okay? We can learn interpretive knowledge by living in the country. Uh, maybe a, one way to, to compare this would be you can read the book about riding the bicycle and you can learn all of the facts about riding a bicycle and then you get up on the bicycle will you be able to ride the bicycle? No. You read every book in the world about riding bicycles you know everything there is to know? No, right? You need some experience of trying to ride a bicycle so it's the same with knowledge about culture okay? so that's why it's always useful to use some local partner if you haven't lived in the country to understand about those things so interpretive knowledge requires a degree of insight best described as feeling, usually gained by experience. Okay? So we can also we can get around this by consulting or talking to the local people. So a fact is 98% of Mexico is Roman Catholic. But interpretive knowledge is that Catholicism is practiced differently in Mexico. Right? For example, they have Day of the Dead in Mexico. 
other countries don't have that, where they have like a skeleton, those kind of things, right? So just, you would know that Mexicans are Catholic, but by going to Mexico and seeing that they have this Day of the Dead festival and experiencing that, you can understand some different differences, right? Than the other country's Catholicism. Mm -hmm. So, uh, when we spoke at the start of the class, we found that there were some students there who went to Australia and Canada and the United States, right? And another country. So just that. I'm not sure if your partner went to another country, but you can discuss with your partner if you lived in another country or studied in another country or are from another country. What kind of interpretive knowledge did you find out by living in that country? Or by visiting that country? <coughs> Something that you think you learned by experience? Something valuable you learned about the culture by experience? for a while and I read in the book that maybe Italian people are more emotional right but by living there for example I realized that I always need to make a very energetic greeting with the Italian people and the goodbye because otherwise they're not going to be happy okay if you don't make very energetic and nice, look very happy to see them right because they are quite emotional right so those little things make a difference to them Okay, whether you do that or not. So, uh, uh, Kim Song Young, you lived in the U.S. before, right? You said. Hmm? Oh, Kim Sang Hee, sorry, you lived in the U.S. before. You said. So, can you tell us any interpretive knowledge you picked up there about the U.S. culture? Seattle? Yeah. yeah. So they they're quite tough. Mm -hmm. They go around without any umbrellas. Yes. Right? They're used to the bad weather. <coughs> okay. Uh, then some students said they visited Australia. Who who's lived and studied in Australia? So can you guys tell us what did you learn from Austra about Australian culture from experience? Actually it's a very complex thing culture and there are lots of races so uh, yeah usually Australian people really hate Chinese uh, because uh, I lived in Sydney uh, there is a main street in Sydney and uh, the owner of main street uh, buildings are usually China Chinese so they uh, Australian think China is kind of invading Australia <laughs> they are taking all the money from the Australia so they really hate Chinese, and they really love barbecue. All right, and what about Canada? A student at the back of the class. Who studied in Canada? Hands up. In Canada. Two students. Yes. What about Canada? Canadian loves hockey. So yes, they are crazy about hockey. About ice hockey. Yeah. Maybe if you meet a Canadian, you can learn a little bit about. Ice hockey for the league, we can help you. Mm -hmm. At least you know the famous player. 
Okay, so then uh, <coughs> let's talk about the cultural sensitivity. So are you culturally sensitive? Sensitive can have different meanings, right? If I'm a sensitive person, it means that you say something mean to me, then I start crying. Because <laughs> I'm very sensitive. Right? Are you sensitive? Do you get hurt if people say something about you? Another meaning for sensitive is that you can understand things easily. Okay? So culturally sensitive means you understand very easily about the other culture. Okay? So emotionally sensitive, you understand the other people's emotions too. Okay? I'm not very emotionally sensitive. So you could come in here with very bad face and very sad. And I don't notice, right? <laughs> I just say, oh, are you having a good day today? <laughs> you look very happy. <laughs> so maybe women are more <clears throat> emotionally sensitive than men, right? They're better at reading people's emotions. But we can also read about people's cultural behavior, okay? So we can see some strange or unusual trait, sometimes annoying, in another culture, because it's different than our culture. So being culturally sensitive reduces the conflict and makes for better relationships. So it means that you don't get upset, right? You understand their culture and you don't get upset because they do something which is strange or unusual. All right. So uh, if I, if you, I gave the example the last time. You guys are all having noodles and I want to have a sandwich. Are you going to get upset? No. Hmm? No. no. Right. If you get upset because of that, then it could make for a worse relationship. Okay. But you're culturally sensitive. You understand my culture. I'm from an individualist culture. It's strange to you, okay? It may be strange to you, but you're culturally sensitive, so you understand my culture, and you don't get upset, okay? You can make some better relationship. <coughs> and it's the same for other uh, people. So these days, cultures, we're constantly learning and borrowing from other cultures. So we can see that people are, maybe the younger generation are getting anyway are getting more culturally sensitive to the other uh, cultures. So maybe it's a challenging question, but when you came to Korea, did you see any annoying or stra strange trait? So foreign students, we have four foreign students here. What was strange that you saw when you came to Korea that Korean people did? Maybe we, China is more similar, so uh, Patrick Khan, uh, what did you find unusual when you came to Korea? <coughs> it's strange when they, uh, when they see someone and they say hi like that, but they don't shake, hand, handshake. Mm -hmm. Don't do handshake. Ah, okay. Do you hate them? <laughs> no, I don't hate them. <laughs> it's a little strange. Do you, think do you go on the phone and say, people are really strange, they don't shake hands, they're horrible. <laughs> <laughs> no. no? So you're culturally sensitive, yes. you understand yeah. Yeah, I understand. that they're a different culture, so if they don't shake your hand, it's okay. Yeah, I'm also doing like that. You start to do like that yeah. too? <laughs> Alright, so you're adapting. Uh, what about Korean students, when you went to the English speaking country? What was strange, strange thing? Or you already saw everything in the US movies? <laughs> Is there anything strange? What was the most challenging thing, strange thing, when people did when you went to the other country? In Australia or Canada or the US? When I was in Australia, I saw some Indian people and I thought they are really selfish because they really like to, uh, they don't really like to uh, interrupt other people or get interrupted because of, we were co-workers. Yes. So I asked something to help me, so, but they, they really hate it. Yeah. Yeah. Why should they help you? They're individualistic. Yeah, right? they're really individualistic. What benefit is it to them to help you? 
Because we are co-workers, I was new, so... No, 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 it's no benefit for me. No benefit? <laughs> okay. That's, that's why, yeah, I, I thought it's really, yeah, annoyed. Oh, how do you feel? Uh, it, it was okay at all. Annoyed? Yeah. Just, huh? just a little bit. Then, after a while, can you understand or you could never understand? I could understand. Mm -hmm. They I have understand. a different culture, right? Yeah, they have. Sometimes they're even competitive because they think, if I help you, then maybe you're going to get the promotion. Not yeah, you. they think... Do you understand they think like that, yeah. the idea? Yeah. Right? So they think it's more competitive. I need to compete with you. And if I compete with you, I'm going to try harder and you're going to try harder. Okay? It's like uh, Kim Yuna and the name, what's the name of the Japanese figure skater? Mao. Mao? Yeah. Do you think if Mao didn't exist, Kim Yuna could do as well as she did? Yes, so that's another way of thinking, right? Yes. Competitor can force you to try harder. Can you okay. say something? Yes? Can I say yes. something? Yes. Uh, in my uh, experience, actually, when I first came to Korea, mm -hmm. I, I, wasn't, I wasn't treated as a normal Korean. Once mm -hmm. I not advance and to get and to go somewhere, but suddenly I'm mm -hmm. like trying to find economy. Yes. My answer heard in Chinese or the phone, but suddenly a grandpa and uh, turned for me and uh, using very dirty words to shy at me. By the time no one came up to help me, there were a lot of characters because I, I, I'm just a Chinese. So at that time I couldn't understand you know, why am I was treated like that way. Mm. Uh, I didn't do anything wrong to anyone. Uh, How old I didn't were they? Hurt anyone because I'm a Chinese. I, I was speaking Chinese. So, but later I'm trying to change my mind. Okay, I'm gonna give a very good look to her. So I wouldn't be treated like that way. So always I keep uh, giving, like, a, keep uh, making efforts. Oh, okay, that was a bad experience. I just want to give a good look. How old was the person? Um, you mean the boss? The person on the bus who was shouting at you. Uh huh. How old were they? Uh, the boss, uh, no, no, the grandpa and the grandpa. So yeah, very old. He was around like a sixty something. Sixty something. Yeah, but I couldn't understand, and he could use it very dirty words to shout at me. Okay, so you, sometimes you can get some individual like that, right? Maybe they're not educated enough, or they don't know enough about. The no, he was dressing really nicely. Other culture. He like a gentleman, mm -hmm. and I couldn't <laughs> accept it at the time. Mm -hmm. But yes, yeah, so that's kind of extreme situation, right? Uh, no, of bad experience. I'm just a Chinese. Mm -hmm. So you said you're okay, you're able to deal with that kind of challenge? Mm -hmm. right. You can see that other Korean people is quite friendly, right? <coughs> it's just the one situation. So, <coughs> thank you for sharing that example. We were going to talk about that later in the question also, right? Uh, so, we need to try to be sensitive to the other cultures. So, sometimes we think that the other culture is similar, so I've been saying things like English-speaking countries or European, but they can also be different, so we shouldn't always think they're exactly the same. Okay? For example, British and American English can be quite a little bit different, right? For example, in Britain they use the word footpath for, on the side of the road, but Americans like to make things a little bit clearer. They call things what they are, right? They call it the sidewalk. Do you understand sidewalk? It's a place where you walk on the side of the street. So the Americans changed their English a little bit, maybe to make it a bit clearer even than the British English. Okay? Uh, so this means the marketing, just because something sells in one country, doesn't mean it will sell in another. So we just talked about the stocks. Uh, US stock, people buy a lot of stocks, but in France they don't buy a lot of stocks. In France, they have a kind of distrust of financial markets, traditionally. So they don't buy a lot of stocks. Okay? Maybe the UK, between France and the US, not as much as the US. Okay? Uh, the European Union is very different. So there are a lot of cultural differences, as I said, between Italy and Ireland, or Germany and Greece. They have very big cultural differences. So we can't just look at one region, an area, do you like if people say that all of Asia is the same? Is all of Asia the same or are there cultural differences? Right? So 
it's the same in the in the other countries. We have to understand <coughs> just because we use the same language uh, or have the same religion, we can still have a different culture. So we can fight. These days we have a cultural change. So young people, for example, they use the smartphone, right? And they can send a text message very quickly. But older people, it takes them a long time to send a text message, or they don't use Facebook much, or they don't use Twitter much. So we can see that uh, we have uh, changes in culture. So <coughs> how disruptive is the innovation to the present values and behaviors? And of how much interest is it to society? This is what's going to decide whether uh, the innovation is accepted or not. Okay, so Facebook was a new innovation. Okay, is it disruptive to the present value and behaviors? Not that much, right? Is it of interest to society, Facebook? Yes, so it's, a, it's accepted. Okay, it's not that disruptive to our values. It means that. People don't think it's a bad thing, right? And we, we can we find it of interest. So if we look at something like fast food, okay, that in Japan, they didn't have much fast food, or in Korea before. But McDonald's and Burger King came to the countries. People start to eat more meat generally, not just fast food, but start to eat more meat and proteins and change their diet, eat more breads. Okay? Uh, so, also the American military was involved in bringing over those kind of foods at the start. Then we have, uh, this is genetically modified food. So, in the US, genetically modified food has been accepted. But, in Europe, genetically modified food has not been accepted. So, different idea about this innovation. So, how disruptive is it? to our values and behaviors. In the US, it's okay. But in Europe, no. They don't like the idea of genetically modified food. How do you say genetically modified food in Korean? How do you say it? Can you say it again? Do you eat that in Korea? No, we don't. How do Korean people feel about that? In the US, you can have big tomatoes this size, tomatoes this size. Oh. <laughs> Do you want to eat tomatoes this size? Huh? Well, if you change the genetics in the tomato, you can make a very big one. Hmm? So people in Europe, they don't like with that idea of messing about with the uh, genetics as much as uh, in the US. So we have to think about these things when we have a new innovation. Is it going to work in the country? Okay. Does it go against the values and behavior of that country or society? Okay? And then balance that against what's the benefit? European people don't really see the benefit that much of big tomatoes. So if we can find more, much more benefit than disruption of the present values, then the innovation can be accepted. So marketers can also try to bring about plan change. So they determine which cultural factors conflict with the innovation and try to change those factors. So, uh, we try to adapt our product and make the people uh, change their culture. Right? We say, well, we change our product a little bit and try to get the people to change their culture a little bit. So this is one uh, controversial one, Nestle and the infant formula in Africa. So African mothers they would usually breastfeed their children, okay, naturally. But Nestle want to sell their baby formula in Africa. So they start to campaign like the wealthy Western woman is using the Nestle product. So they're trying to change the culture of the African women to using the milk product for the babies. Okay? And they made some campaign like, well, all of the <coughs> Western women who has a lot of money they're all doing that, right? So you should want to be like that successful woman too, and you should use this uh, milk formula. So that was their kind of trying to change the culture in Africa. But this was controversial because the water is not that clean in some places in Africa. So when they mix the water with the milk formula, the babies could get sick. 
So Nestle got into trouble about that kind of thing. Uh, Fidelity Investments in Japan, they try to educate the Japanese. We just talked about the investments. So educate the Japanese people about the products. So they're not too scared of the risk of the stocks, right? Or make some products like the ETF fund or mutual fund with a lot of different stocks. So it's safer for the Japanese market. And then we can have a kind of a hybrid grain, which is not really uh, that much genetically modified, just putting two grains together, mixing two grains together, uh, can be more acceptable in some countries. Okay? It's healthier and doesn't die as much. So do you have any question about this part? Uh, the other thing we can do is just introduce the product and hope for the unplanned cultural change. So in Japan, the US military, it wasn't really a planned change, the US military brought over the bread and the sugar and the milk, and Japanese people started eating them. Okay. We talked about Nestle, who made the long-term plan with the coffee in Japan. Coffee-flavored ice cream first for the kids, and then 10 years later, when they're teenagers or adults, they start drinking coffee. So, uh, discuss this question with your partner. Give two examples of the origins of culture and the elements of culture. So we looked at different origins, where culture comes from, and different elements, what culture is made of. So discuss with your partner two examples of each. This is about uh, not country of origin, origins of culture. Origins of culture we looked about at back here, right? Where does the culture come from? This graph, origins, <coughs> elements. Two examples of origins and two examples of elements. E, e me wrong? Can you answer the question? Origins. Why do we have? Why is our culture the way it is? What has affected our culture to make it what it is today? Why do people have different cultures? Geographic reasons, historical reasons. Okay. We also have the family, religion, society, those kind of things. What about the elements? Rituals, yes. Symbols, okay. They're all the elements. So, uh, 
<laughs> and let's finish there for today. So, just, it's useful uh, to read the book. This is chapter 4 at the moment, right? This is the book. It costs uh, 45,000 more, right? There's also one in the library. But uh, you can get more in-depth knowledge also by reading the book after class. So, I'll finish there for today. Uh,